Hey you guys, how you doing? Nice to see you, glad you're here. Watching this video with me? Well, I guess I'm not watching the video, I'm making the video. Nonetheless, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for being here. For this one, I will be making one of my sponge slash soap dishes. It'll be a closed form with a top on it that you can carry with a little mouth and some teeth. And inside of the vessel, you can place your favorite soap or favorite sponge. In my case, I pick a sponge. Also, we give all of our pieces personalities. So at the end of the video, I will be revealing his personality. So stay tuned. Here we are doing part one of the throw, centering and coning. Uh, this part of the process just kind of gets the clay particles all lined up and spinning in the right direction. It makes for an easier throw. So this involves taking the clay up into a tower shape and then back down into a mound that's the right height and width for the most efficient throw. This particular form is going to be a little bit wider of a base, so I, but I kind of start these kind of medium. Not too tall, not too, not too short. Sorry, I forgot how to speak there for a minute. I think you could ask anybody that watches my live streams. I do sometimes forget how to speak. Next part, pulling the walls. So for these wall pulls, uh, the goal here is to leave some clay at the top because this is going to be an almost completely closed form. Uh, the handle at the top won't, won't close all the way, but uh, it'll be nearly there. And here we are, beginning to close the form up a little bit. I'm not going to go all the way just yet. I have a little bit of wall pulling left to do. The idea here is to get everything finished out down below where we're going to close it off because after I close it, I cannot get my hand back down in there. So right here, we're getting real close to being where we're going to be down low. So next up, we're going to be doing a little bit of... Oh, oh almost forgot. Got to get the water out. Can't leave that water in there. I mean, you can flip it over when you're done, but it kind of warps the, the uh, warps the piece a bit. And for completely closed forms, I, you can't get the water out. So, can't get that water out. If you do not get the water out, it could lead to cracking uh, later on and having issues with your piece. So now we will move on to trimming the bottom. I always trim the bottoms of my pieces uh, as tightly as I can. That makes for an easier time later on when uh, finishing the things. Now it's getting time to close the form on off. The goal here is just to close it almost all the way, but leave it open enough so that I can pull a little knob there for the top. And you'll notice that I'll have a little bit of a weeby wobble there. That's very common with closed forms. And every now and then I'll get one that's like dead centered perfect, but most of the time I have a little bit of trimming at the top. That's just kind of the nature of it. I have been doing this for 15 years professionally and there's always a little wobble. Yeah, nobody's perfect, right? But I'm about to show you guys the solution to a little bit of wobble. Unless I grab my tool here. Oh, yep, big reach. Oh, all right, here's the satisfying part. Let's do it. Ooh, I remember doing this the first time. It was nerve wracking. Oh, boy. There we go. Feels good. Nice and straight now. I feel like I got a little intense there for a minute. I like doing that part, in case you can't tell. Here we go. This part means that we are almost there. And then we'll be moving on to putting the face on our friend here. So I skipped over the drying part because that's pretty boring. But in between this phase and the next station I'm about to go to, uh, the piece does dry for, mm, I think this one was a couple hours. I put the fan on it a bit. It, it's got to be not leather hard, but fairly dry to be able to handle it. See, just handle it. If I were to try to do that right off the pottery wheel, it would just splat. All right, for this portion of the vid, we are going super speed because this uh, this part takes a while. A little bit slower paced than the pottery wheel portion. So right here, I'm just like trimming off the excess clay around the edges and kind of thinning things up and making uh, making it look nice and clean, the mouth opening. And make sure there's no jagged sharp spots because people are gonna be reaching in there, grabbing their soap and or sponge. And right here, I've already made my eyes and teeth out of a different white stoneware clay. That's how I do all the eyes and teeth on mine. It's just a, a different kind of clay that fires out bright white. And this is how I trim my things. I just press a footer into the bottom so that the piece sits level and then sign the piece. A lot of times I'll use a stamp. It just depends on how wide the bottom of the piece is. On these wider ones, I typically just sign them by hand. I don't do as many of those as I make mugs. And here come the teeth. Like I said, the teeth are made from a different white stoneware clay. And I fire them out and I just leave them bare. I don't put any glaze or anything on the, the white teeth. 
Oh, putting the eyeballs on. We are getting close now. And it's personality time. Meet Ricky. Ricky is a stickler for correct cleaning. He vacuums and sweeps every day, changes his sheets at least once a week, and dusts his blinds every weekend. Ricky would never reuse his towels, and he would certainly never reuse a sponge. But if you do, then he's here for you.